guys, welcome back to the channel, Malcolm V8. Today I'm going to show you this nifty little screen that I built for our 90 Fox Body project that we recently put a supercharger on and we added air conditioning. So it's got a lot of changes going on, lots of new information and parameters. Now it's cool to have some gauges like this. This is basically a Raspberry Pi screen and computer that's going to show us all the information that we want to see on the dash. But what's more exciting to me is how it's also a data logging device. It's, it's actually a smart computer, essentially. You've, I'll show you a little more detail, detail here in a little bit, but we've got a whole computer running and operating system on here, and it's data logging all the time that the engine is running and driving. And it's not like when you data log an OEM ECU that grabs a handful of parameters. On standalone ECUs, like this one has a, um, a micro squirt in the car, mega squirt base, it captures everything about the engine. All the available information is captured all at once anytime the engine is running and driving, which is super cool. And this thing has Wi-Fi in it. So anytime it's in range of my house and it sees the Wi-Fi connection, it automatically uploads all the data logs to my computer in here. So it doesn't even matter who's driving the car. Anytime they pull back in the driveway, I have all the data logs sitting here, which is really neat. And to take it a step further, I tweak the uh, tune and make fine revisions and upgrades here. And anytime the car gets turned on, it automatically checks Wi-Fi. If it sees a new tune available on my server, it just pulls it down and flashes itself, and it's updated. It's pretty slick. And if you're not familiar, standalone ECUs, they update their tune in about like that. <laughs> it's not like when you flash an OEM ECU and you wait minutes. This is almost instantaneous. It's that fast. So anytime someone jumps in the car, they turn it on, boom, new tune is on it if it's available. And you go, and it's, a, it's an excellent way to very fine tune and refine the car. I don't even have to walk over to the car, get the laptop out, nothing. Pretty slick, so let's take a deeper dive and look a little closer at this. All right, here's the gauge powered up. Let me zoom in a little so you can see a little better. So this is a screen that Reese designed. And that's the nice thing with these, you can customize and, and just build your own screen. So like he has temperature over here, fan speed, which that's a very interesting one. I'll explain this later because the fan speed doesn't even come from this ECU. Uh, it's got boost, there's air fuel ratio, tachometer on here and voltage. And like these little symbols here, for example, the temperature and whatnot, these are things that he created in some editing software and put together. Kind of the nice thing how you can just make these however you want. And he actually has air intake charge right here, but it's got a big nut connected over it because it's not connected to the ECU. Once it connects, the screen actually brightens up and that goes away and, and you'll see the, the whole thing. We'll show that once it's in the car. Um, and then, you know, it's got a few little features here. Let me uh, see if I can zoom back out here. And one of the features is that it wires up to the headlights in the car. So when you turn on the headlights, it detects that and the screen will actually dim down. I'm not sure how well we can see that in the camera. I'm gonna turn headlights off again and there it comes back up. Pretty neat. Something else that I did, let me see if I can show you the wires. So I got some wires right here. I'm just disconnecting, simulating things. One of the things is like ignition wire, for example, when you turn the key off, I have that right here. And when I disconnect it, the screen actually just blanks, but the unit is still powered up. And it stays that way for about five, 10 minutes, whatever you configure. And that way when you jump out, pump gas or something like that, it shuts off. And when you get back in and turn your key back on, it's just instantly on. So you really only have a boot time of about 30 seconds the first time you start it up on your trip or whatever you're doing with it. Otherwise, it just goes to quick sleep with the screen and comes right back. So it's pretty responsive for the, you know, the bulk of your driving. So the screen itself here is actually just a Raspberry Pi branded screen. Makes them super easy to find and pretty standard. They believe they consider this a seven inch screen. What's nice is these work at a perfect size for SN95 cars. I have one in my Cobra. And even in the Fox bodies with a little 3D printed dash ring that I'll show you. Fits great. So on the back side, there, I mean, it looks a little daunting at first, but it's really, it's just a Raspberry Pi screen and then a Raspberry Pi computer itself. Now I did add some extras. This little guy here is an RTC or real-time clock. And what that does is it has a little battery on it and it stores uh, time, just like it says. Because a, a Raspberry Pi computer doesn't store time and your data logs become very confusing without date and timestamps. So this ensures that every time this thing boots up, it has the exact date and time so all my data logs are correct. Now, normally when a Raspberry Pi is within range of Wi-Fi, it boots up and it grabs time off the internet and sets itself and you're good to go. The problem is when you start the car and you're not at home, it's an issue. So it's fairly simple. Now you do need a little bit of computer understanding, you know, maybe tinker with some computers, electronics to put this together, or you can have a buddy help you. 
and then you just load the Raspberry Pi OS, you load the Tuna Studio software, kind of like you would on a computer, and then you create a custom dash, and that's pretty much it. It's kind of simple. They have Wi-Fi built into them, they have Bluetooth built into them, all kinds of stuff on these Pis. I wired up this plug, of course, as you can see, with one of these switch connector, and that way, uh, you know, I can just put a create a harness and plug it into the car. Here's the harness wired in. Makes it nice and simple. We have battery power, key on power, the headlight switch, ground, everything in here. It just plugs right into the unit. Uh, in addition to obviously that one harness that I just showed you that plugs in, we also have a USB to serial cable as that's what pulls the data from the microscope that feeds all of the gauge cluster information. So yeah, nice and simple enough. Here you can see I have the 3D printed frame on, ready to go. It will fit right in there. So yep, let me get this in there. Here we have it in the car. Do a key off. See how it goes out like that? Say you're doing whatever, you know, within five, ten minutes type thing. Key on and reconnects that quick. Very nice. Let's see, I'm gonna turn the headlights on here. And they're dimmed down. Doesn't look like much on camera, but it dimmed quite a bit. Turn the headlights off, and it brightens back up. And I can control whatever brightness levels I want there. And key off. There it is, very cool. I pulled the screen back out and added an additional harness with a switch that ties into the main harness. And the idea is to have an override so the ignition switch is not always controlling the screen. I now have the ability to turn the screen off, on, or put it into automatic mode where the ignition takes over again. Okay, fast forward a couple of weeks, we've been playing around with this in the car and you can see it's all changed. And that's because these power circuit boards that we were using are just complete garbage. We went through several of them, a uh, complete waste of money, can't get money back, Pfft, done with that. So instead I decided to build something myself. I plan on doing something a little bit more trick in the future, but for now just to get by, I went ahead and 3D printed this base over here. And then I got a power supply board, this here just is a USB output, 5 amps, which is pretty neat. And this is just a super fancy... A uh, timed relay essentially. It's got a whole bunch of configurations and options and how it behaves. Very cool. And I got them stacked in here. So there's the power supply board at the bottom with the USB out going to supply the power. And then the, the timed relay. And what happens is when your ignition key or power comes on, this relay turns on and sets power over here. And when you remove power, that's when the screen blanks, but the, the unit stays powered up. And before the timer expires, the software will do a clean shutdown and turn itself off before it power cuts. That way you never get corrupt files or any issues like that. All right, let's talk fan speed like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And we're talking specifically about the fan speed displayed on the Pi as a gauge. And it became extremely difficult to make happen in this Fox. And I'll show you why. Part of the reason is we're using a Ford Fusion fan speed controller to drive the fan at variable speeds, soft start, and so forth. The issue comes from the MS2 or Microsquirt computer. It does not support a PWM output or a pulse width modulated output to drive that Ford uh, Fusion fan speed controller. The MS3 computers, of course, do it, so it makes it super simple to, you know, to display a fan speed. All you would have to do is grab the PWM signal duty cycle, send it up through your USB cable, USB to serial, and display the gauge. Nice and easy. However, so on the MS2, the, what we did to make this happen is, well, just to make the fan speed controller work, we had to go ahead and grab one of these Arduino microchips and go ahead and program it with a whole bunch of coding and, and code to connect up to the Megasquirt computer through the CAN bus network. And once it's connected to the CAN, it can extract information from the computer, like throttle position, uh, engine speed, uh, vehicle speed, and of course coolant temperature. Now based on those inf parameters it can make some smart calculations and it can determine how fast the cooling fan on the engine should be running. It then generates this PWM signal over here, drives the, the fan speed controller, which in turn spins the fan at the desired speed. As you can tell from this, the computer itself has absolutely no idea what speed the fan is running. And you know, that's all calculations made by this code and this Arduino driving the fan the uh, fan speed controller. So for weeks we drove around with one dead gauge. The fan speed just simply didn't work because I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what to do. 
And I started doing some research and trying to figure this out. And in the process, I discovered something interesting. So these mega squared computers support expansion boards. You can quite literally have an expansion board out there that has some inputs on it that come in and it's a way of expanding the inputs to your computer and it connects up through CAN. And each board will have a specific CAN ID, which is how it's identified on the network, and of course some slots on there. So I thought, okay, great. We can then just broadcast that value up into the computer and it has a value. Unfortunately, the MS2 does not support that. The MS3 supports that, but not the 2. However, you can use expansion boards on the, on the 2, but it gets more complicated. Here's what happens. So, it actually, well, first off, let's talk about the CAN. This CAN connection right here is a standard 11-bit, kind of industry standard CAN. That's why you can have wide bands, uh, dash screens, and various things connect to your Megasquirt computer and talk through the standard CAN, no big deal. However, the expansion boards work on a proprietary 29-bit Megasquirt CAN protocol that they developed. And in order to get those values, the computer has to be configured, or the ECU has to be configured to know about a specific sensor, and it has to request the information. It literally broadcasts out a request and says, hey, board number one, slot number three, I want your value. And the board then has to process a request. It literally generates a request packet, kind of like a network two-way communication, and it sends a response back and says, hey, here's your reply to your request for board number one, slot number three, and here's the payload or value that you were requesting. So that kind of hey, was a little bit daunting. I wasn't sure what to do about that. So I started searching online and reading. There's, there's tons of documentation. And I found lots of people who had been working on this and various libraries out there. And so I started coding on this Arduino. And it took me at least two weeks. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it took a while to figure this out. A lot of testing and back and forth and coding and changing. But I finally got it working and here's what happens. My Arduino essentially simulates being an expansion board with additional inputs. So I programmed my MS2 and I said, hey, you've got an expansion board out there and on slot one, there's a value that you're interested, you want it. So it broadcasts out a request and it says, hey, looking for expansion board one, slot number one, get me a value. The Arduino receives that 29-bit proprietary CAN packet and it processes it and it generates a reply and sends back a response. The MS2 gets the response, it looks at it and it says, hey, here's a reply to my request and the payload, guess what? It's the fan speed I'm sending it back. So then I configured my gauge and I said, hey, for fan speed, you're going to use expansion board number one, slot number one's value and boom, fan speed. <laughs> What a convoluted process, and it took a while to make all that work. And I tell you what, every time I get in the car and I look down at the fan speed on the pie, I kind of smile because I just know how convoluted and complicated it is to get that value on there and how much work it took. It seems so simple. Anyone else who gets in the car and sees fan speed goes, fan speed. I know what it took. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed and uh, you know there's actually been a really cool update that's happened to the Raspberry Pi Tuner Studio software in recent days. It's actually just in beta testing right now. I've been testing it and using it. I have an update video coming on that. It's super cool enhancement, something I've wanted for a long time to address some shortcomings. They've, the developers have been listening, they finally created something, so uh, catch you next time.